Hey guys, welcome back. You made it to part four of the Proko hand series. We're gonna dive into some specific poses and then we'll end it with a fun lesson on how to draw cartoon hands. I'm assuming you've already seen parts one, two, and three. You should be familiar with the basic anatomy of the hand and the process I taught in the last lesson. In this demo, you'll learn all about drawing fists. This is a tricky pose that really requires a good understanding of the underlying anatomy. It's a lot of information crammed in a small space, which can get messy and confusing. All right, let's do it. The basic forms. As you know, I always start my drawing by establishing the gesture, which indicates the movement of the pose. But a punching fist isn't dynamic. It's rigid, it's solid. The wrist is locked straight, so it doesn't break on impact. If you're drawing a superhero fist, you want it to feel strong, like a brick. It's hard to give a brick a dynamic rhythm. It's just a straight line with a sudden end. But that's not a bad thing. Don't think that everything has to be dynamic. Some things should feel blocky and heavy. A fist shouldn't feel like jello. The rest of the body, including the arm, can and should be dynamic. The fist is a brick. There is gesture in some of the secondary forms, the subtleties of the fingers, as you'll see later. But the big gesture isn't flowy. It's a bunch of built up energy inside of a box. So from the very beginning, I think about the big boxy shape. One of the main anatomical rhythms is the rhythm across the knuckles. The middle finger knuckle sticks up the highest. We're going to draw the overall arc that describes the knuckles, instead of a wobbly line trying to get all the details right off the bat. Let's do the same for the second set of joints at the bottom. We already know that the middle finger knuckle is the highest, but what about at the bottom edge? In a relaxed pose, you'll get the opposite curve. Same reason, middle finger is the longest and the pinky is the shortest. This shape is inactive and kind of boring, but watch what happens when I squeeze my fist tight. The pinky and ring fingers move down and we get a straight line across the joints. That's a much more interesting shape. Curve on top, straight on bottom. You can push it even farther for a fist like this. It's a bit more dynamic, but it kind of loses some strength and stability. I wouldn't draw it like this for a punching fist. Maybe just if it's squeezing something really hard. The pinky and ring finger rotate down when viewed from this angle too. That big drumstick of the thumb prevents the index and middle fingers from moving down. But the pinky and ring fingers have all this free space. They'll flex more to close this fist fully. If you're starting a revolution and you're gonna use the power fist as your logo, look for this downward curve through the knuckles to suggest a strong clenched fist. We've already identified the top and bottom edges. Now we'll finish the front plane of the box with the side edges. Then get to the top and side planes and we have a simple boxy fist. This will help us keep all our details in perspective because we have angles to relate them to. If you're drawing a fist bump coming right at the viewer, the top and side planes won't be visible. So you'll just need to draw the front plane. Remember that the fingers are not parallel. They converge inward toward the middle finger. Add the thumb and the details of the joints and skin. You know, all the stuff we learned in the previous episodes. In this three quarter angle, let's indicate the box of the palm. It'll help us attach the thumb and fingers. We'll start the thumb by establishing that triangular base. Extend that cylinder and trowel shape. As you draw the thumb, look at the angle of the nail and notice how the thumb is twisted. It points downward at about a 45 degree angle. All right, let's get the boxes in for the finger segments. Remember what I said about the pinky and ring finger rotating into the hand. From this three quarter angle, the index and middle fingers stick out a bit the ring and pinky angle back. We can only see the other segments on the index finger. The others are hidden inside the fist, which makes it a lot easier on us. Details. 
What we've been doing up until now is all underlying structure, the primary and secondary forms, then visible stuff that people might not notice when they look at your drawing. But that's what holds it all together. Now let's address the surface of the hand, the details of the tertiary forms. Let's start with the knuckles. Sometimes it helps to think of the knuckles as little kneecaps. But let's look at the subtleties of the anatomy there. There's three layers of stuff. First, there's the bone. If you remember from the hand bones lesson, the top plane of the metacarpals is a flat trapezoid shape. Under it is a ball with which the first phalanx articulates. On the surface, you'll see the flat plane on top with a rounded protrusion in front. It'll taper down to a triangular shape, but that's caused by the addition of the second layer, the tendon. This tendon travels over the bone and softens into the front plane of the first phalanx. And then there's the third layer, the skin. It'll do two things. It'll soften the forms of the knuckles and it'll create a concave dip between the knuckles. It's not just a dip down along the top plane. It's also concave inward at the front plane, a recessed plane between the knuckles. Now that we know the anatomical layers there, we can design the knuckles with context. With the tendon shifting around and the skin softening things, there's a lot of ways the knuckle contour can look. And we're artists, so we can emphasize and change things however we want. I look to add variety to the shapes. For example, we can design a taller triangular shape for the middle finger knuckle, a boxy shape for the index, and smaller boxes or balls to the ring and pinky. The creases between the fingers will start at the level of the bottom of the knuckles. Now, something interesting about these fat pads on the fingers. When you squeeze your fist really tight, the fat pads spread out sideways actually making the fingers wider. That will make this hand look even more masculine. Don't leave any air pockets in this area. In a clenched fist, this fat pad on the top of the palm and the fat pads on the bottom of the fingers get squeezed together very tightly. The skin creases are pretty intense in a fist because everything is bending. When drawing skin creases, use them to echo the gesture of the fingers and really create a sense of clenching. This hand has a lot of energy. We want it to look as action-packed as possible. We're capturing a second in time, and we want the drawing to look like that. Immediate, energetic, real. Not like someone was holding the pose for an hour and their hand got tired. At this point, we're ready to map out the shadows, fill them in, add some dark accents, and the halftone details. The hard part was all the linear structural stuff we just did. Shading a fist, is no different than shading a ball. Just gotta know the laws of light. Okay, so that's a wrap. In Premium, I have a lesson where I take you through the process of shading and adding details to the hands. I'll also show you how to draw hands holding something for shortened hands and female hands. Don't miss out on all that premium knowledge. Join the other Premium Proco people at proco.com anatomy.